Okay, welcome to the November 21st, 2023 meeting of the Jones Library Buildings and Facilities uh, Committee. Um, I see a quorum present, uh, so I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order at 4.01. Um, and then I'm gonna ask everyone to signify that they can hear and be heard. Uh, Farah. Here. <laughs> George. Here. And Sharon, who's library director, not a member, but advising. Uh, Sharon. I'm here. Hi, everybody. Uh, and Alex Lefebvre, I am present here too. So um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Act of 2021, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to the Zoom meeting that can be found on uh, the Jones Library website uh, or by dialing in by phone. Uh, the public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their virtual hand. The meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Jones Library website. I think that's where we put it. It's also on the Town Amherst YouTube channel, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I see that we have four attendees in the audience. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. And with that, I am going to flip to the agenda. Uh, so the first item of business is a motion to approve the minutes of October 17th, 2023. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve. Second. Any questions, comments, or discussions? No. no. Okay. Uh, so um, voting to approve the minutes of October 17th, 2023. Farah? Yes. George? Yes. And Alex is also a yes. Next item on our agenda, sorry, is uh, public comment. Um, would anyone in the audience like to come into the room and provide public comment? Um, if so, raise your virtual hand and we will bring you in. Okay, seeing none. Um, we usually also offer public comment at the end of the meeting. So uh, if you change your mind, we'll check back in with you at the end of the meeting and give you likely another opportunity. Um, Next item on the agenda is the delivery van. George, what say you? Uh, I don't have an update on the van itself, but I do have an update on the charging station. Uh, I worked with Town Hall to split up the PO and make it work. So the charging station has been ordered and it is on our way to the facility. So when it shows up, uh, we will have it installed and it'll be ready to go when the van gets here. Great. And just as a reminder, um, not everybody reads the meeting, meeting minutes or attends every meeting, but that is something that um, once we get into the project can be moved. Um, so wherever we put it now, it's Correct. movable. Correct. It will be movable. Okay, great. Okay. Sarah, any questions about the delivery van? No? Okay. I think the next item is the North Amherst Library Building Project update. I know every time I drive north, I... I've seen people on the roof, so hopefully that means good things. Um, where, what, 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 what do we hear from the town? What does the town have to say about things? Yeah, so I, so I've spoken with Petra, the branch head. Um, they still don't have a certificate of occupancy, but the lift works, so that is awesome sauce. Um, the roof is supposed to be fixed this week. Um floor drops are supposed to be installed this week's and so this so this is for power for you know the computers and the printer and phone and things like that um there is furniture in place uh books are in place because the lift works uh their uh, staff have been able to get get books in the place so um we still have to do more weeding um and and I asked Petra to approximate, are we talking about 10 books or 10,000 books? And they, she was saying about four shelves worth. Um, it's just, uh, we had to shrink our collection in, in order to, yeah. Uh, so we have more weeding to do. Um, some of the shelving got lost in the process. So uh, Miguel, our awesome Miguel is actually building new shelves for us to be installed. 
Um, the circulation desks are on site and and placed. Um, that was one of the things that Guilford needed in order to know where to put the, the floor drops. Um, tech chairs. We're still waiting for chairs to come. Um, Petra, the staff still need keys to the book drop so that you know people can start returning books there. Um, and we also need a systems overview. You know, George and Petra need need to need a walkthrough with Guilford um, so that everybody knows how to use how to use the stuff. Even though it's a, a town building, invariably things happen when no one's around, and and so people need to know how to how to get to places and you know turn things off and turn things on that kind of a thing. Um, and the other question that we have is, is signage. Um, uh yeah uh it would be lovely if there were a sign that said north amherst library and um you know like an open and closed kind of a thing before we had a flag am i right george this is this is what petra was telling me yeah originally there was a flag and it was what will not be the main entrance anymore it was you know at the one door which is not accessible so um you know, worst case scenario, I assume that the flag could be moved over to the other side with a different mounting. But yeah, it, it would be great if there was signage that had the hours and days of service and things like that. So that's pretty much everything that I have. Uh, just the, the staff have uh, absolutely uh, done great with a less than ideal situation and um so once we finally get the coo i don't think we'll need a, a full month because they've been able to do stuff so we're still we're still just kind of waiting on town stuff that's all i got all right it sounds great sharon a um, couple of questions one is uh where do the books go the overflow do they go back to the jones or the overflow? oh yes yes yeah, absolutely it'll yeah. go it'll go the jones will get first or or the munson um so it'll yeah it'll all get okay. figured out yeah and what do we need to do about signage is that something we have to do is that something I, i'll that talk we... to paul about it now it needs to be a, a paul Counting. thing okay Thank you. And it's, I mean, it's often that that signs, you know, happen after a project is done. So I, I don't think this is unusual okay. based on my experience. Oh, and last thing is the bench back, the stolen uh, bench. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not that I've heard. Yeah, me neither. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to go there tomorrow to meet up with Petra after our department heads meeting. So I'll, I'll check to see if it has returned or not. Um, I had a couple of questions. So um, I don't know how many books four shelves means. Like four, I don't know. How wide is the shelf? Like, yeah, I was gonna say, how wide is the shelf? How, like, is that, are there 20 books to a shelf? 100 books to a shelf? Five books to a shelf? Like, yeah, so it depends on, are we, are we talking children's books? And it could be hundreds of books. Are we talking, you know, John Grisham? Then, um, I guess, I, I guess know, width, like, width of shelf would be helpful. At least you be. could then get like a visual sense of, like, are we talking a, a hundred books i'm gonna guess in all that that's yeah in all and that's if they're adult fiction that we're okay. talking about okay. um, but if it's a if it's a combination of you know some kids and some adults then it could be more okay okay um and i assume the weeding is based on what gets checked out or what's super old or i mean sort of our usual weeding procedures would be followed for that yeah yeah. Okay. Um, and then you said we're waiting on chairs or like, is that like a chair to sit at the computer? Is that a chair to sit and read? Like what kind of chair? All chairs? Uh, like, it's funny. Yeah. Sit right now? Yeah, no, uh, I have no idea. Uh, I assumed when she said it uh, that it was for the, the two desks, but mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Uh, it okay. could be because so much of ha has had to be squished. I, I don't know if they are patron chairs that we're talking about. Do you know, George? Uh, 
I did order a a tall chair for the new circulation desk. Okay. Um, I believe all of the original chairs that were there as patron chairs have returned, uh, with the exception of the green lounge chairs, because I don't think there was room for them anymore. Yeah, uh, I'll know better tomorrow. I haven't been over there in a, in a couple of weeks, so I'll know a lot better tomorrow uh, as far as what's left that can fit and what needs to be brought over to the Jones and possibly deaccessioned. But I believe she was talking about the circulation desk chairs, okay. which, which okay. I ordered today. So Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And then you said that they need keys to the to the book return. Is it a new book return? Same book return? Like, new, yeah, new. no, it goes right into the side of the building. It's fabulous. So we don't have okay. to have staff come in, you know, off hours. It'll just all drop into a, a small closet, basically. Yeah, no, that's I, I remember discussions about that. That's lovely. OK, and so that's for town to give us uh, that's kind of like the, Handing, handing over the keys, as it were. <laughs> yeah, and my my guess is that has to do with certificate of occupancy. So okay, I th okay, that's, I think that's what we're waiting for. So I and, wouldn't think that that would happen until after Thanksgiving. Okay, and then if memory serves, so uh, once we open up the meeting room is a town meeting room that people will reserve. The bathroom, I believe, is the town's responsibility in theory to clean. So do we have all of the procedures? Is that all? So in theory, yes. Yeah. In in theory, yes. But so far, it's not being executed. So that's definitely one of the. It's a sticking point, let's call it. Yeah the so the, you... the the policy the the memorandum memorandum of understanding has been. You know, I mean, everybody's on. Everybody knows what the responsibilities, where they lie. It's just um, you know they they just haven't been put in place yet. Okay. I mean, I guess what I'm wondering is, I, I, as one of our concerns were early on, right, is that, you know, a patron's going to come in and they're going to want to reserve the conference room and they're going to go, obviously, to the human in the building, which is the librarian. And so um, librarians, being the lovely people they are, I'm sure are going to go out of their way to help people, um, which then obviously they're scheduling rooms rather than doing other services. But I guess I just want to make sure that the staff the staff knows what their options are. They're clear, like, you know, like, do we have a public computer? Do they go over and schedule it over there? And if you have, like, I guess I, I just want, I want them to be really clear about what their role is. And I guess I want to make sure the town's really clear about what their role is because I just see job creep and I feel like our staff has a full plate already. And while I am incredibly appreciative of the extra space, I'm also mindful of asking more of people who, I, I don't know any employee in the world who doesn't already have probably more yeah. than need on them. I just so there's there's two yeah. pieces to that that puzzle. One is the bathrooms. So yeah. that needs to be taken care of, if not daily, every other day. And and I, I would argue that, you know, certainly every time a me the meeting room is used, it sure. needs to be taken care of uh, before and after. Um, so... Yeah, so that so that's going to be new for the town. Um, there, and based on our experience with the months, and yeah, uh, so so that's a the bathrooms. B is the meeting room, and so all along, you know, for years, even with regards to the months, and I've said to the staff, you need you need to direct people to town hall because they're going to take care of the the hall. But like you said. Alex, you know, what librarians do is help patrons. So, um, so I know we're going to have the same issue at the North that we do at the South. And um, I don't know if there is a process in place for the North meeting room. I don't know who people call. Um, and I, I, think that still has to be worked out by the town. So I, I think there's going to be some growing pains for the town. So I know I'm, I won't be a trustee, so I'm just going to put out there, if I were continuing on as a trustee, um, I guess what I would ask is that, you know, maybe we have some check-in points after we open where we're checking in with Petra 
about, and, and, and we should probably be doing the exact same thing for the months and quite frankly, right, is how are things going? What do you need? What conversations do we need to have with town? Because, you know, I don't, I don't want the North and South libraries to become the place no one wants to work because, you know, you're being a librarian half the time and you're doing with other, you know, town. So I, I just want to make sure that things are running smoothly and, and town's doing what they're promising. And, um, you know, I've, no reason to expect they won't, but I think it would be good to have some kind of check-in process, especially since it's something new. Um, you know, what are things that we didn't expect maybe that are happening or occurring? Um, and I just, I'd, I'd like to be proactive with the staff so that they feel supported as this opens up. Yeah, I will, um, because there have already been issues, I'll be, I'll be talking with Paul about this and, um, that's really all I can say right now. Okay. But yes, I'm I'm hearing you and feeling you, as okay. are the staff. Okay. Well, I mean, that's we're we're here for them and we want them to be able to be happy in their jobs and successful in what they do and everything we can do to create success for them and feeling good about their jobs. That's absolutely what we want. Sorry. So what's the pro is the process not gonna be the same as it was before? What is what is different now? There's a meeting room and a bathroom. <laughs> yeah, so now so it was already too much for the facility the town's facilities staff to yeah, handle okay. at the Munson and okay. now their work has doubled. Okay. Um so I I have not seen uh uh-huh um so prior, so prior to this project, um, you know, when, when it came to light through research that the North Amherst was in fact a town owned building, um, you know, part of the, um, part of the process of this project happening was, you know, we, we gave over control of the building to, to town where it belonged. Um, uh, but that also meant that the town needed to take care of the building. So, now that there are public bathrooms and there's a meeting room, those are in effect town responsibilities now. So there's a bit of a there's a bit of growing pains. There's a bit of a change uh, because the library staff are no longer going to maintain the building itself. We still do branch deliveries. We still take care of library property and library books and library furniture and things like that. But the physical building is now under the responsibility. Of, of the town maintenance staff. Um, and it's, you know, the building is not open yet, but it's just the process of getting that all, all those responsibilities where they need to be and actually making that happen. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think those were, um, and then I'm sorry. Um, so we still don't, we know we are gonna take less time once we get the certificate ticket of occupancy, but we still don't know when that's going to be. No. Okay. As well as still having, obviously, grand opening notifications so trustees can attend this time because we have notification. No. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. Um, then I will move on to the building and grounds report. Um. Let me think. Uh, what I will say is that the past couple of weeks, the uh, contractors that were charged with moving the plantings uh, from the Kinsey to the Kestrel Trust have been on site, um, and they did their thing. They moved several plantings. I know that Carol Pope was on site overseeing some of it, uh, as well as representatives from the Kestrel Trust. Uh, they have completed their work to the best of my knowledge. Uh, the holes uh, where the plantings were have been filled in. I do not know if they accomplished everything that they needed to accomplish, but uh, what they have done so far, it's, you know, it's met uh, the needs that we had as far as, you know, leaving, not leaving any holes and, and uh, you know, putting things back in place uh, when they were done doing what they needed to do. Uh, so I don't think I have anything else on buildings and grounds unless Sharon does. Oh, wait, no. Um, yes, there's one thing. So I just signed um, uh, a quote for work to be done on our sprinkler heads. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Can you elaborate? It's a couple thousand dollars. Twenty-four. Yeah, it's a it's a um, it's not an annual inspection. I think it has to happen every three years, but don't quote me on that. Uh, it's an exploratory that they that they pull a, a sprinkler pipe and they they check for um, they you know they check for corrosion and they check for blockage and stuff like that. It's a it's a state mandated test, so it it just takes you know it's it's a couple thousand dollars i think if if i remember correctly so um you know it's just one of those things that it really it should happen because it's a mandated test even though we are coming very close to potentially being close for uh for a renovation we're just trying to we're keeping up on everything that that is required of us uh to stay open and safe is is this the same test where so the pipe that broke and closed the building for a couple of days we did mm -hmm. a sprinkler test it was like literally the it was literally next door to the one that corroded and and broke this is the same test pretty much yeah yeah okay i yeah. mean it, right but it was done for, but yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah Thanks. yeah they picked the wrong pipe to check i guess i don't know. <laughs> right i mean it's obviously it's a random check but yeah i just want to make sure that was the same i had the same one. okay um yeah. far, do you have any questions comments um I don't have my notes in front of me, but I feel like we had go back and look. There was a, there was a there was um was it one of the control panels or something that we were waiting on because it had to be designed before it could be purchased? Are we still? We are still waiting? Wait, we are still waiting for a quote. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I actually nudged them last week about it. Um, and and we're still having your. If I'm remembering correctly, is this the one we've had more than one control go out? Is this the one where you're having to manually do things like every, constantly? Correct, correct. Until we're it's, able to replace it. Yeah, it's not as okay. big of a factor during heating heating season, but it's still a factor. You know, it's it's still using a bit more energy than if we had an automatic control. So uh, I have nudged them to see where that quote is because it's been a bit. Okay, and the I feel like the slate roof. There was the area by the spiral staircase that we were keeping an eye on by the staff lounge. Still keeping an eye on on that. We're yep still leaking, but not to the point. Because my recollection is for us to deal with that is a much. It's not. It's not a quick patch. It's a. It's not a bigger, quick patch. No, no. Right. So if we can not tackle that, that's probably. Uh, ideal highly to... preferable yes yes yeah um it not, has not leaked the last couple big storms we've had so okay um oh yeah we are watching it okay not the least of which of course is getting on us anytime you work on a slate roof there's there's potential of damaging other slate roof the rest of the roof exactly but then, but then also potentially the magnitude of the work would require us to hire like this isn't just us having a, a a roof contactor come out and like replace a few shingles. It's a right. much bigger. It would be bigger. It would be bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In in which we'd have to go to town for funds for that. It would. It would definitely be a capital repair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Right, do you have anything else? Okay. Is there are there any other outstanding things that I'm missing that are kind of in the. Obviously, we still have three boilers. That's not changing until we replace our HVAC system. Still have three boilers. Thing. You're all working great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and and did we, I think one of the things we were doing after the firebox, we had the issue with the, the liner of the firebox was we were going to pay to have the other fireboxes inspected. Um, is that still to come or... Has that happened? We did. We did have that happen. Uh, they okay. didn't do, they didn't do a in-depth exploratory like they didn't take the boilers apart uh they okay. used uh scope to to look around as best as they could and from what they could tell with those inspections they were all the other three fireboxes were were solid from from okay. the best they could tell it was the most cost efficient way to do it versus pulling all the boilers apart because if you start pulling an old boiler apart you could cause more damage so they thought it was yeah. the best thing to do so that has okay. been done and and they are uh, from that inspection, they all looked still fairly serviceable. Okay. Um, so right knocking now, knocking on the wood. Yeah. On the wood. So we still have. So obviously, 
if the project doesn't move forward, we've got the agreement with the town and we've got HVAC and roof specified, but clearly sprinklers got to be there as well because that we can't, yeah. obviously we can't wait on that one. I don't know about anything else, but those like that's got to be in that part of that conversation as well. Okay. Yeah. Which is yeah. in the quotes that we got from Western builders back in the day. Right, yeah. right. And I made that argument the last conversation that we that we have with the town is that it was it was very hard to prioritize those three items one over the other because they were all equally so important and so vital. So yeah. Um yeah. Depends, depends on the day and the weather. <laughs> exactly. You know, can I also I just I'd like to say when um, you know, it was discussed at the finance committee meeting. I was really thankful for Myra Ross speaking up about the importance of handicapped accessibility. Um, you know, we're all, it could happen to any one of us at any moment in time. Um, and I, I, it's so important that every human being be able to walk into or, or, you know, wheel into or crutch into or stroller into the Jones library. Um, and so handicapped accessibility is not something that we should be seeking a variance on. It, it is something we need to tackle because it's the right thing to do. Just like removing the asbestos and fixing uh, the leaky roof, um, and having an HVAC system that works. It's just not, it's pretty unconscionable actually. Um, so I just want to state that. Okay. Anything else on the monthly building and ground report? All right. Well, I guess that kind of somewhat segued into the backup building project planning, which I'm assuming that it, it remains with the town. There's nothing new that they've shared with us. Right. Yeah. Other than I get, I guess the only thing, and it's not really, was the uh, new person whose name is escaping me, the guy who's the um, runs the capital projects now, Bob Parent. Bob Parent, yeah, which is great. Like, I know that he updated the uh, Western Builders quotes to, but but other than that, I don't think anything new. And has so, he and did he, wait, has so, he so to building? yeah. Yes, he's he toured the building and to clarify, so it's not just the Western Builders number. So yes, Western Builder created the base uh, document, but then when Kuhn Riddle took it over, they yeah. they didn't just slap on their research onto the Western Builders. They uh, they updated that, and I I think George can talk more intelligently to that piece, um, and then added the accessibility information too. So. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive report. I should refer to it as Kuhn Riddle, not the, the Western Builders then probably. Yeah, because you know one of the big things that Kuhn Riddle did was try to figure out the best way to streamline it and combine things. Whereas right. the Western Builders was just a list, um, you know, and they 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 split it in two at one point, but Kuhn Riddle went a step further and determine what would be the best things to do together to make it the most cost effective, plus adding in the ADA quotient. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's asking a contractor to tell you how much your HVAC is to fix versus having an architect tell you the actual, it has to be designed. We would have to hire an architect and an engineer to do it. So it gets us one step closer. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bar. And that doesn't even include include gender inclusive bathrooms, right? Mm -mm. So it's no. just HVAC, assess um, ADA compliance, partial ADA compliance. No, that was full. full? I mean, to code, to code, it wouldn't oh. have been right. above and beyond. But to but code, it wouldn't take care it's, of. It's not universal of, design. Yeah. It's just yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, are there any topics I didn't anticipate that you did or that came up? No, this was a good conversation and thank you for the opportunity to, to clarify. Yeah. Um, so I'm coming to the end of the agenda. So as we always do, I'm going to open it back up to the public. If anyone has, um, public comment, you are welcome to come on in and provide it. Raise your virtual hand. Love to hear from you. people a minute to find it because I always have to find my hand. <laughs> All right, I go in once. 
All right, so not seeing that. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody has a nice weekend and uh, look forward to seeing everybody in person, I think, for our next, no, two trustee meetings from now. Oh, yeah, the trustee meeting next week on the 28th, that will be via Zoom. Zoom. Uh, Vanguard will join us. And then our very last one of the year when we get to get we get to come together in person and celebrate Alex. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Have a good Thanksgiving. Uh, Bye. Meeting adjourned at 431. Bye. Bye.